Member for Barker. Mr Speaker, my question is to the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Agriculture and Water Resources. Will the Deputy Prime Minister outline how the government is securing the future of agricultural production in Australia and in my electorate of Barker? And is the Deputy Prime Minister aware of any threats to the ongoing viability of hard-working Australian businesses and families? Deputy Prime Minister has the call. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the honourable, honourable member for his question. Might I also uh, thank, uh, through him, uh, the support from the citrus growers in South Australia who have commended us on the work that we are doing in uh, turning around the citrus industry and bringing real prosperity back to the area. It's so important when areas such as the South Australian Murraylands and Riverland region produce $2.1 billion worth of produce. Uh, within South Australia, we've got the, also the wool market that's turned around. We've got the wine market that's turned around. We've got record cattle prices, record meat sheep prices. We're bringing real prosperity back to the area by good policy. And of course, that lives in stark contrast to some of the other things that are happening. Because the irrigators, one of their biggest problems they've got is high electricity costs, high electricity prices. And we have a running example of what would happen to our nation, the nation of Australia, if it adopts the same policy that South Australia has on renewable energy—50 per cent. You don't need to model what's going to happen to Australia if, these, if this crowd gets in. You can see it. It's live. They got a real live experience of 41 degrees last night because all the air conditioners went out. Why did they go out? Because of their pathetic policy. Because of their pathetic way that they are tied to the Greens. They are more interested in Balmain than they are in the people of the Riverlands. They are more interested in Annandale than they are in Adelaide. They are more interested in green preferences than looking after the Australian milk working men and women. We have seen this in such a live example. The Loxton pumping station in South Australia has increased from 2010, where they had an $880,000 power bill, to a $1.8 million power bill in 2017. We have seen the Central Irrigation Trust. Its bill has gone up by $1.4 million in 18 months. This is just driving people out of jobs. It's driving industry out of South Australia. So what does the, what does the Australian Labor Party want to do? Well, of course, when you see a complete and utter stuff up, you replicate it as federal policy. That's what they're going to do. They want to do to South Australia. They want to do to Australia what they've done to South Australia. They want to give us a real life experience of the Middle Ages. They want to take us back to the caves. That's how it works. As these jobs strip off, when is the member for Maribyrnong going to go to the dispatch box and defend his party's position on power? When is he going to stand up and say something about what they're going to do our nation on power? When are they going to stand behind this absolute stroke of genius, which is to take Australia to the same position they're taking South Australia? And now the West Australian Labor Party. It must be a contagion. They want to replicate the South Australian experience, but it's not much of an experience. It's a bit of a nightmare. In the last five months, they've had four months where they've had blackouts. In the last five months, they've had four very good reasons why businesses should be leaving South Australia. So um, it's it's a really a question for you, isn't it, the member for Maribyrnong? The Deputy Prime Minister's time has expired. The Deputy Prime Minister will resume his seat.